but mostly solar and EVs, are going to need a rethinking of our cities in, in many ways, uh, because we're going to turn over that infrastructure in many ways. So I want to offer two opportunities, uh, solutions, in terms of our cities. One, today in America, we have lots of parking lots. Today, there are more than 500, see, nobody's even keeping track of this. We have 500 million parking spaces at a minimum in the United States. And we may have as many as 2 billion parking spaces. We have 300 million people. We may have 2 billion parking spaces. That's amazing. Um, in Houston, there may be three, 30 parking spots per resident. In some cities, probably Houston, uh, parking lots cover as much as a third of the whole land area in the whole city. Parking. Parking. Okay? Parking lots cover 36 hundred miles, maybe up to 14,000 miles, depending on whether it's 500 million parking spaces or 2 billion. It's somewhere in between. So I'm thinking, just thinking, that if we have 3,590 square miles and maybe up to 14,000 miles of parking lots, and all we need is one thousand square miles of solar to power every single car mile in America if it were electric. Just thinking, right, that this is a no-brainer, right? I mean, a small percent of our parking lots covered with solar, this is not agricultural land that we're talking about. It's not even deserts. Right? I'm thinking this is a no-brainer. Does that make sense? It's an opportunity, right? So, in fact, some companies are already developing solar parking lots. Um, and I'm not sure that you specialize in this, but you might, right? It's just like some companies specialize in residential outsourced something like longevity and solar city owns its own trucks and ladders and this and that you know this eventually might need some sort of specialization and the specialization might be that you do solar but you also do charging stations for instance yeah yeah it would be more difficult in manhattan absolutely absolutely but you drive out 20 minutes and you find parking lots like this in fact I'm glad you mentioned it. This is New York. Opportunities, people. Opportunities. OK? Yet another one. Landfills and contaminated sites. Uh, okay, let me. From just 1998 to 2009, just in a period of 11 years, more than 6,000 landfills were closed in America. Uh, there are 11,000 contaminated sites in the United States and landfills that cover 23,000 square miles. We have 23,000 square miles of landfills and contaminated sites. What do we do with this land? It's close to cities, probably. It's close to water, probably. It's close to transmission, probably. Right? I mean, all landfills are close to cities, if not like right there. What can we do with all this? In fact, the EPA has pre screened 1,600 of these landfills for clean energy potential. So a lot of that has been already studied for their clean energy potential. Did I say 23,000 square miles? Okay. 
So in fact, <laughs> this opportunity has not gone unnoticed. Uh, over the last, actually, five, six years, this has grown by 10x or so. Uh, and it's not just solar, but it's mostly solar. So if you look on the left, uh, the percent, you know, there's some wind, some biomass, etc. But, you know, more than 50% of uh, the clean energy developed there has been solar. Um, in fact, the solar developed in landfills in America is larger than all but seven states in the Union. So just landfill solar is bigger than 43 states in the Union as far as solar. Does that make sense? So, you know, again, the EPA has done a lot of work to, to, um, to do this for us. Most are actually relatively small, one megawatt to five megawatts. And again, they're close <coughs> to the cities, they're close to transmission, they're close to, you know, I mean, many of the issues that land is cheap, I mean, how expensive can a landfill be to lease or whatever, right? So um, I'm thinking, if landfills um, and contaminated sites cover 23,000 square miles, and, right, I'm not just going to talk about EVs here. Remember, oh, way back when, in the first class, when we said that solar on 10,000 square miles would generate all the power needs in America. All of it, right? 10,000 square miles. I'm thinking if landfills cover 23,000 square miles and we need just 10,000 square miles to generate all the power needs in America, again, we don't need uh, to develop agricultural lands or anything like that to power the whole country. And we also need 1,000 square miles to power every EV. So if you think about it, we can power, generate all the power that we need in America for houses, industry, commercial, uh, and EVs with less than half the land that is either landfill or contaminated today. Interesting, right? I'm thinking this is a total no-brainer, at least as an opportunity. A few landfills actually are, uh, have wells to extract the methane that, that, that the garbage generates. Um, and, you know, in fact, that's a good thing because the, the municipalities or the, the waste management companies that own or manage those lands can get the value uh, from generating energy in those in those lands. Yes. Who, who are these uh, projects for typically? These you know one to five megawatt projects are they for local communities or are they? Let me give you an example. Yeah. A good question. Let me give you the example. So uh, recently, a 6.7 megawatt solar power plant was announced for. Uh, former landfill in Napa. Um, and uh, let's see, so North Bay landfill once served the cities of Napa, uh, Vallejo, and American Canyon, as well as the county of Napa. Um, and this would be designed, let's see, this was a PPA to sell to PG&E, in this case. Um, it, the land was or would be leased. I, I haven't, I don't know if they have started construction yet, but would be leased by the Waste Management Authority, which in this case would be municipality. Um, and in fact, the Waste Management Authority has been already generating 55K to 85K from the extraction of methane from the landfill. So they're used to that, right? Um, so your question is, who would buy it? In this case, it was PG&E, but it could be anyone else who signs a PPA. 
could be a mall, it could be, you know, whatever, right? Um, and, you know, the Waste Management Authority would probably make, be a participant. You would probably have to pay them a combination of lease and, and, and uh, payments, right, per kilowatt.